Good afternoon, everybody. Can you hear me? Can everybody hear me? Yeah. Okay. All right. Hi, everybody. My name is Kelly Cabrera. I'm a registered nurse here at Jacoby Medical Center in the adult emergency room. I'm a member of NISNA, and I am also the president of the local bargaining unit here. Um, thank you so much for coming. Um, we're here today because we need to talk about what's going on in our hospital and in hospitals all over the city, the state, and around the country, really. And it's that things are not okay. We can't normalize what's going on in our facilities. And right now it feels like we're two years in and there's so many things that we should have figured out by this point and we just have it. Our emergency rooms are overflowing. Just this week here, we've had upwards of 40 patients waiting for beds. And with the current crisis with COVID, it's just adding more and more of a strain. And so, you know, I spoke to a reporter yesterday who, who was very optimistic and saying, you know, that the numbers are, are coming down and this is not as severe. And those things are true. And, and I want to be optimistic too. But the reality is that our healthcare system was never designed for this. So when we went through the first surge, we have to remember when we had lockdowns, it was because we knew that our hospitals weren't built for this. And so now it just feels like we are so desperately trying to seek normalcy without remembering that, again, our hospitals were not designed for this type of situation. And just because our cases have gone up and you know people have chronic conditions and and they do require hospitalizations. It doesn't mean that the car accidents have stopped. It doesn't mean that people aren't having heart attacks still. Uh, just on Sunday, we witnessed you know, the horrible fire that occurred in the Bronx. And you know, first of all, I wanna commend all of my colleagues that were there that day and all the first responders that did an amazing job. And, and of course, everybody you know, worked really well together and, and got through it. But my, I can't help but wonder what would have happened if, they, if at the exact same time there had been a car accident. What would have happened if you know our colleagues from the units upstairs weren't able to move all the patients out of the ER on time to make room for the victims? Funds that have been allocated to our system, you know, the, the largest public hospital system in the country. I'm thankful for you know Mayor Adams and Governor Hochul, and for uh, Senator Chuck Schumer, you know, dedicating the funds to our system. We have to remember that this is coming on decades of underfunding, on, on decades of understaffing, and at the end of the day. The money and all of this is, is helpful, but it's a short-term solution. We need a drastic change in our healthcare system. In New York, we need to pass the New York Health Act. We need single-payer healthcare. Across the country, we need Medicare for all. We have to stop normalizing this two-tiered healthcare system where people who have money, people who are wealthy, have care, and everybody else suffers. Yep. It's not fair to our patients, it's not fair to our communities, and it's not fair to your workers that have been going through this for the past two years, giving it everything that we have, and never feeling like it's enough. We're tired of being put in situations where we have to make terrible choices because we don't have resources, and we don't have enough people, and we don't have enough equipment, and we don't have staff. That is not appropriate. And two years into this, we should not be dealing with these problems. We should have figured out testing. We cannot accept what the CDC is telling us regarding our workers working while COVID positive. We know what that feels like. They did it to us two years ago when they said that we didn't need masks and only needed bandanas. We remember what that felt like and that is what this feels like again. It just feels like we're getting abandoned over and over again and we're just trying to do our best. And so we're here you know, to tell the community that we care about you guys, we care about the patients, we wanna do the best that we can, but we can't do it this way. And we hope that you can support us and, and understand where we're coming from. So good morning all. How are you today? I can't hear anybody. Right. We're not all right. We are not all right. We are angry. We are outraged. Two years ago, when we had the surge, as nurses, we did what we had to do because we were not prepared. You would think the local and the federal government would learn and have enough nurses, enough PPE, in order to help the nurses. What did they do? They cut down on our staffing. They stopped hiring nurses. And they have asked us to do more than, should do, than we should do. Now with the surge, they are asking us to come back to work while we are ill. And we, need, we know that COVID is airborne. We're not even having enough masks, enough PPE. We're not fit tested. There's no tracing. So we're here today not to make noise, to say enough is enough to protect our communities. 
during the COVID surge, we know who suffered. It was the underserved. The black and the brown people suffered the worst. We have this hospital here. The door is open for everyone, regardless of your immigration status, regardless of your insurance status. But every patient is a VIP. Every patient needs to be treated. Every patient is a VIP, okay? We may not have the money for other private hospitals, but the patients need to be served. And we need to hire more nurses and to this, all the facilities in order to care for the patients. You cannot ask an EO nurse to care for 30 patients. I don't care how great of a nurse you are. You are not going to do it. Then who suffers? The nurse. We go home, we're sick, we bring the illness to our family, okay? The average of a nurse age is 60. By the time we retire, we're not even good to ourselves. This is science, people start listening to us. Science tells us we need to protect ourselves. COVID-19 is here and it's not going anytime soon, but we need to have the proper PPE. We need to have enough staff. We need to have safe patient nurse ratio in order to care for our patient ratios it doesn't matter private public upstate downstate middle state we need to care for our patients our patients are the vips we need to put patients over profit because what we see here it's all about money it's all about profit it's time that we care for our communities it's time that we care for our children look how many pediatric children we have in the hospital why because we're not caring for our community. We need to go out here. So we're here to tell the community, we're here with you, we're here to save you. But in order for us to save you, we need to be protected. We need to come to work and feel protected so we could deliver proper patient care to our patient. We need to be able to listen to our patient, to have time for our patient, to care for our patient, to educate our patient. Some of our patients do not speak English. We need to have people who could translate and understand and find out what's going on to our patient. We should not have to take the patient out of the hospital and put them on the street, okay? The patient needs to go somewhere. I just saw a patient leaving the hospital just now with a trash bag, and I said to myself, where is that patient going? Who's caring for our patients? So time is up, this is time. Yes, there's funding, but it's too late. It's two years too late. So it's time, time is up, it's too late. Let's hire more nurses, let's respect nurses. Let's try to retain the nurses. Why are the nurses leaving? Because we're tired. It's not because we don't wanna care for our patients. We're tired, we can't take it anymore. It's time, time is up, enough is enough. We need to hire more nurses. We need to have proper PPE. We need to come to work. You can't send a soldier to war without proper weapon. There's a war out there, and we need to be prepared. We need to be able to embrace it and fight it. So we need help. Thank you.